Ladies and gentlemen, NeuroAngel.org is proud to present to you the Banana Bites series, excellent cases with great anatomy. The title today is Stroke, not your usual M1. We got lots of better things to show you. The hypodense basilar sign, mm -hmm. aspiration angioplasty, another thing, huh? Of course, we have great anatomy, we have a stent river angioplasty, and an MRS of zero a few months later. The case is in conjunction with the great Sarah Rostansky, the stroke director of Bellevue Hospital Stroke Center in the great New York City. Here is the case. The presentation is progression to locked-in syndrome. On the left, we have a non-country CT sagittal reconstruction. On the right, we got the CTA. Laser pointer. Testing, testing. Here is the occlusion, right? Now look right here on the non-contrast CT. Kind of interesting, right? This is the hypodense basilar sign. Not a very good sign. Low sensitivity, low specificity, but when taken together with everything else, it is a useful sign. What does that tell you? Look right here. This is not as dense. This is normal, right? This is the top of the basilar is normal. We're catching the low, the low vert normal right this is the same density as a straight sinus for example right here this is hypo dense what does that suggest that suggests soft plaque right not an embolus a soft atheromatous occlusion a very typical location for that as opposed to the top of the basilar where we see the emboli so a, a hypo dense basilar sign pay attention to that when it is there it can be useful but you need the sagittal recon to see it. So what do we do? This is what we see. We see another typical characteristic right here of a atheromatous occlusion. You see how it's not exactly like, there's not exactly a, have an abrupt cutoff. There's kind of a gradual cutoff. You see this ICA situation with a small, um, small stenosis at the origin. All of these are signs of atheromatous disease, right? Now, what do we do? What we like to do is this. We like to take a Sophia, in this case it's a six, and we aspirate and we ingest the clot and whatever else may be right there. So we just hook it up, we get it to about right here. Then we turn on the aspiration and we go up as much as we can. The point is to ingest the embolus if, and it, if it is an embolus or a clot, if there's a conjunction of clot and athero. And if we can eat up some athero as well, that would be great. So we're creating a little tunnel here. So this is what it looks like. This is first pass. First pass, we have a TK3. Now, look here. Notice, again, this tunnel we made here looks pretty much the same size as the Sophia 6. We have some stenoses here. So again, this is an atheromatous occlusion. The variant anatomy that's going to become important later is this SCA, right? We have duplicated SCAs. Now, what is that? Every SCA has a division. There is a hemispheric division and a vermian division, right? That bifurcation can be anywhere. It could be here, it could be here, it could be here. Sometimes there's no bifurcation. They arise separately from the basilar trunk. When they do, the lower is always hemispheric. The upper is always vermian. And that's important because they're both eloquent, but the Vermian one is much more eloquent. That, of course, covers the midbrain. You see some perforators here, very proximal perforators to the ventral midbrain. Um, it also usually supplies portions of the quadrigeminal plate, a very important branch. Here is a, uh, here's a slightly better view of that. So you see like a residual stenosis here, and here's the SCAs. Now, Everything is going fine. The patient's improving. Uh, we get about, I don't know, five, six hours later, there is a deterioration. The deterioration is a different kind of deterioration. It's not a pure motor syndrome. Now we have a diplopia and a decline in consciousness. So both of these things are suggesting a different location. Dr. Rostansky calls another stroke code. We get a CTA. Here's our CTA. As you can see, the basilar is open, a little bit narrowed again, but still open. But there is another finding here that becomes important a little bit later. 
this is the angiogram of course the patient's taken to the angiogram because we still have a question of what's going on and what's going on is right here we don't have the second SCA the vermian division is now lost right there are the bits and pieces of this thing left you can see a tiny little piece here and here but there's no real integrate flow and there's a corresponding hypodensity in the midbrain portion and in the vermian portion right here so what to do here's another picture on the left we have the now on the right we have the before that's another picture again we like to spend a few seconds getting a better picture always useful later so what to do we can give some IATPA it's a small branch we can try uh, maybe just a wire manipulation balloons are not very helpful here uh, quite dangerous actually so what do you do well what we like to do is this we like to put up a little stent retriever this is the retriever baby or baby retriever in this case right we go up and we deploy one of these so here's the uh, picture of that you can see the stenosis in the middle now we do that because we don't really want to pull it what we want to do is just open it affect the gentle angioplasty because we think that there is just an occlusion at the osteum and then we're going to resheath the stent retriever and maintain access and see what we can see so here's the uh, kind of like um, two phases of um, injection this is an earlier kind of phase there's a little bit uh, later phase with the stent retriever still in place you can see that right here so we have some anti-grade perfusion now going on and now we resheath it and once we resheath we shoot this really cool picture so here's the isolated this is the superior this is the vermian right the SCA vermian division frontal view here's the lateral view right here so going around the midbrain you have some perforators here you see a little bit of an embolus that probably is just a subocclusive thing that got moved up a little bit distally and here's the cerebellum mm -hmm. now here we have the post so the post looks reasonable right there's still a stenosis of the SCA but it's patent in fact the stenosis is probably less than the uh, lower um, hemispheric division of the SCA and uh, <laughs> it's also looking a little better than that left ICA now the left ICA is chugging along just fine seems like everything is more or less open again there is a kind of a ratty mid basilar uh, but all in all we are doing fine back here is the final run so we have restoration of integrate perfusion and that's the final picture so the final MRS um, three months later is an MRS of zero thanks to the combined efforts of uh, stroke neurology and neurointerventional with that we conclude we thank you for your attention in summary we've presented a couple of things that we like to do number one uh, we like to look for this hypodense basilar sign now you need to have the, cur the recons for that the sagittal recons are very useful um, probably a little underappreciated the aspiration angioplasty is another concept that i think it does not get enough play not enough exposure very very useful at times and then, of course, we have those other things. We hope to see you in November for our annual banana course. And now I have to go. Thank you very much.